How is it possible that the Lord of the Rings TV show will cost over a billion dollars? Which characters will we meet again? And how did the Tolkien estate's demands impact the show? Hi, I'm Clive. Let's go on an adventure. The most expensive show of all time. What's a couple hundred million dollars between friends? Well, it seems like it's nothing to studios nowadays, as they throw cash around like they're Salt Bay. The original Lord of the Rings trilogy wasn't cheap to make by any means, even for its time, as each film cost just under $100 million to produce. But it did help that Peter Jackson filmed the whole thing back to back to save on any unnecessary expenditures. Now, get this. One season of the TV series is going to cost more than any of these films. Not only did Amazon have to pay $250 million for the rights to Lord of the Rings, but it's estimated that each season will range between $100 and $150 million. By the end of it, the whole series is expected to cost over $1 billion, making it the most expensive TV show of all time. Even Elijah Wood couldn't believe the figure when he was told about it, saying that it's crazy. At least now we know why we pay so much for Amazon's delivery services. But in all seriousness, this is a history-making project that's likely to change the course of entertainment forever. We haven't even reached a point where films are costing this much, but Amazon has invested this insane amount of cash into this one production, challenging its competitors to up the ante too. It's a huge make-or-break gamble, but will it pay off in the end? It's a prequel. If you're expecting to see Frodo Baggins and his hairy-footed friends again, you might be a little disappointed. You see, this new Lord of the Rings show won't be a retelling of the trilogy or even The Hobbit. In fact, it'll be set much earlier than that. And no, it's not going to be an origin story for Aragorn either. Seriously, think even way earlier. As revealed by the maps and official synopsis, the series will take place in the Second Age, which occurs thousands of years before the adventures of Frodo and the Fellowship. The good news is, the Second Age spans over 3,441 years, which means there are lots of stories to be told here. The even better news is that Sauron should be a central character, since it's the critical time period when he created the One Ring. So you already know who the main bad guy is going to be here. But does it count as a spoiler that the protagonists won't be able to stop him? One fan-favorite character that will be coming back is Galadriel. Well, a younger version of her to be exact. She'll be betrayed by Morvith Clark, who's appeared in a couple of series and as Dora in the personal history of David Copperfield. Joining her will be quite the cast, with new actors constantly being announced. And if you don't believe that the producers are trying to create their own version of Game of Thrones, then the casting of Robert Aramayo and Joseph Maul should convince you otherwise. In case you'd forgotten, Robert played a young Ned Stark, while Joseph portrayed his brother Benjen on the show. Maxim Baldry from Hollyoaks and Spartacus's Cynthia Adai Robinson have also been cast, but their roles are still under wraps. Whichever way, it's pretty exciting to see a different age portrayed here, as it's something we haven't seen before. But there's also another reason for the series taking place in this specific time period, which we'll reveal a little later on. Same place, different production. When you think of Middle-earth, you immediately picture vast, picturesque landscapes and a place that feels like it existed a long time ago. Well, you can thank New Zealand's gorgeous scenery for that. After all, there's a reason Peter Jackson filmed both The Lord of the Rings and Hobbit in this majestic country, and the TV series is going back to its roots as well. Well, it almost changed locations at some point, though. Basically, Amazon had to hold a crisis meeting with New Zealand's Minister of Economic Development after the studio threatened to move locations because of the lack of available studio space in Auckland. Apparently, the people involved weren't exactly a bunch of happy campers then. New Zealand reassured Amazon that it wanted the studio to shoot the series there, but also didn't bow to any unrealistic demands or special requirements. As expected, there was some back and forth between the two parties, but they eventually came to an agreement to carry on the production in the country. But then the pandemic hit a month into filming, and everything was halted as everyone tried to get a grip on the spread of this horrible virus. Fortunately, the show was one of the few projects that was granted a border exemption by New Zealand and was allowed to continue filming later in the year. Phew! The production of the series sounds like an epic adventure just by itself. A familiar actor returns. When news broke of a new Lord of the Rings TV show, it left the fanbase a little conflicted. Of course, they'd love to see more of Middle-earth, but what about the iconic actors who made the previous movies so darn special? 
Well, it was music to all our ears that when most of the actors were asked if they'd consider reprising their roles, they said they'd absolutely love to be a part of it. However, as we found out, this series is set much earlier than the time period in which their characters were, well, frankly, alive. Though, there is one previous Lord of the Rings actor who has been confirmed to be returning to the world of Middle-earth, but we're not sure if he's playing the same character or someone entirely new. The actor in question is Peter Tate, who played Shagrat, the not-so-quite-smart orc in The Return of the King. Whether any other previous actors or characters are returning, perhaps even in new roles, is unknown at present. Could Gandalf return, or was he even born at the time? Well, when he was known as Olorin, he was around since the beginning of time. However, he only took the form of Gandalf in the Third Age. He never featured in the Second Age, but he technically was still around, so anything is possible here. But we'd expect the creators to try and keep their cards as close to their chest here. I mean, you have to hold on to some secrets until the show airs, right? The Game of Thrones Push Make no mistake about it, the success of Game of Thrones has inspired TV networks and streaming services to find the next big epic adventure. To prove how much of a big deal it is, Amazon boss Jeff Bezos told his people they need to create a fantasy series that's comparable to George R.R. R. Martin's world. Naturally, Lord of the Rings served as inspiration for Game of Thrones, so it only made sense to go all out for this property and to secure its rights. But it didn't stop there for Amazon Studios. In a bid to recreate Game of Thrones' success, it headhunted the creators of that very show and tried to get them to helm this new series. At the time, executive producers David Benioff and D.B. Weiss were in discussions with multiple companies about possible deals, but ultimately chose to sign with Netflix over everyone else. While this match made in heaven didn't happen, it's one of the most intriguing what-if scenarios of all time. Imagine if the creators of the best fantasy show of all time received the opportunity to adapt to arguably the greatest fantasy series. Brrr, getting chills just thinking how mind-blowingly awesome it would be. Alas, it wasn't meant to be. Five Epic Seasons Simply put, one season isn't enough to tell a Lord of the Rings story. You need multiple seasons to explore the massive world and infinite amount of storytelling possibilities. Well, you'll be happy to know that Amazon's purchase of the rights guarantees it five seasons to tell the full story at once. More importantly, Amazon already greenlit the second season before the first one even started filming, which must mean it has huge confidence in the property. Of course, there are several factors that will influence how quickly the seasons are rolled out over the years, but with the streaming giant holding the rights, it's likely that it'll have a release plan in mind to suit both the fans and shareholders. While five seasons of the show are almost a certainty to happen, it won't ever leave the second age of the series. And that isn't because of Amazon, but because of… the Tolkien Estate's permission. By now, you're probably sick of hearing about all the money that Amazon paid for the rights to Lord of the Rings. Ultimately though, it didn't get full control of J.R.R. Tolkien's work. Instead, there were deals made behind closed doors, with the Tolkien Estate being very clear about what Amazon can and cannot do. Tolkien scholar Tom Shippey, who was a consultant on the show, said that the estate told Amazon that the show can only be set in the Second Age and not cross over with anything else. Tom explained that there are details that Tolkien didn't elaborate on in the Second Age, but the studio needs to tread this ground very carefully. The scholar said, Theoretically, Amazon can answer these questions by inventing the answers, since Tolkien did not describe it, but it must not contradict anything which Tolkien did say. That's what Amazon has to watch out for. It must be canonical. It's impossible to change the boundaries which Tolkien has created. It's a bit of a legal minefield and lots of clauses, but it appears like Amazon has figured out where its jurisdiction begins and ends. Though, it's crazy to think how complex this whole thing turned out. Especially if you're paying $250 million for it. Sheesh! The secrecy behind it. Since we're living in the age of gossip and spoilers, nothing is sacred anymore. You can find out plot details and even leaked footage before a movie or TV show is released nowadays. As a result, studios and networks have resorted to extreme measures to keep info from leaking out to the public. Sometimes, only portions of the script are given to actors, while blood packs swearing each other to secrecy are also a common thing in the industry. Okay, we're joking about that last bit. Or maybe not. <laughs> but hey, Amazon isn't leaving anything up to chance here. 
In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Amazon chief Jennifer Selka explained that the writer's room is firmly under lock and key. She said, You have to go through such clearance, and they have all their windows taped closed. And there's a security guard that sits outside, and you have to have a fingerprint to get in there, because their whole board is up on a thing of the whole season. Poor writers. We genuinely hope they're getting at least a little bit of sunlight during the day. But look, I mean, if you're really desperate for some spoilers, you could just, um, read the books? Seriously, all the info is there. Well, we don't have to wait too long to find out everything, as the show is expected to debut on Prime Video later this year. When, though, is another question, but it's safe to say it'll probably be towards the end of the year. The films were released in December, so maybe it's a tradition that Amazon is trying to follow here. If you'd like to watch more about Lord of the Rings, check out our video that takes a look at the book versus movie comparisons. And let us know in the comments section down below what sort of topics you'd like to see us explore in the future. While you're at it, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for some more awesome videos. Thanks for watching.